Today's lesson is lesson 1-8, algebra properties. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to apply the distributive property. You're going to be able to identify the distributive property. You're going to be able to identify the commutative property, identify the associative property, and lastly, identify the identity property. Here's a list of your vocabulary words for today. Equivalent expressions, properties, distributive property, commutative property, associative property, and identity property. So I'm going to start with the distributive property. And in math terms, the distributive property says to multiply a sum by a number, multiplying each add-in of the sum by the number outside the parentheses. And I'm sure you're just thinking, what on earth did she just say? I'm going to show you with letters first, and then I'm going to show you an example with numbers. So if I had letters, I could have A, parentheses, B plus C. Basically, what the distributive property says is you take the number on the outside of the parentheses, the add-in, and you multiply it by each of the numbers on the inside of the parentheses. So basically what this would look like is I'm going to go A times B, and I'm going to rewrite that A times B. And I'm going to add to it because I see the plus sign right here, and I'm going to multiply the number out here, A times C. And the reason why we have the distributive property is because not always do we have inside the parentheses numbers that we could add together. For example, in this example, we don't know what B plus C is. So another way to write, write it is by applying the distributive property. These two um, expressions here, A parentheses B plus C and A times B plus A times C, these are known as equivalent expressions because they mean the same thing. Even though they don't look the same, these two expressions are equal to each other or equivalent. Let me show you this distributive property the same way, but this time with numbers. And I'm going to have 3 parentheses 4 plus 6. And so when I apply the distributive property, remember you take the number on the outside of the parentheses and you multiply it or distribute it to each of the numbers on the inside of the parentheses. So I'm going to start by saying 3 times 4 plus, because I have the plus sign right here, and then I'm going to take the 3 and multiply it by the 6. And that, I've applied the distributive property. This first expression here is equivalent or equal to this expression right here. And I could actually use an equal sign here to write and say that these two things are equivalent to each other. So let's actually apply the distributive property. Let's actually do an example with it now that we understand a little bit what it means. So here it says use the distributive property to rewrite each expression and then evaluate it. So we're going to do two things here. We're going to rewrite and we're going to evaluate. So in order to rewrite this, this means, remember, I'm going to take the number on the outside of the parentheses here and distribute or multiply it by each of the numbers on the inside of the parentheses. So that's 5 times 3 plus 5 times 2, because remember we can write multiplication with either parentheses or the dot. So I've rewritten the expression using the distributive property. I've done the first thing, and now I'm going to do the second part. I'm going to do the evaluate part. That means I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the math. So the order of operations says that you're going to do the multiplication before the addition. So that means 5 times 3 is 15 plus, and I'm going to bring down everything else I didn't do yet. Remember, I'm going to multiply, the, distribute, the order of operations says multiply before add, so 5 times 2 is 10, and I'm going to bring down everything else I haven't done yet. And now I'm going to add these two together, 15 plus 10 is 25. And there, I've evaluated this expression. I'm going to show you that the distributive property and the order of operations, we're actually going to get the same answer because the order of operations says that you're supposed to do the work on the inside of the parentheses first, which in this example we can, but in other examples with the distributive property, you can't always. So the order of operations says I'm going to do this work inside the parentheses first. 3 plus 2 is 5, and then I'm going to bring down the times 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. So see, here I followed the order of operations, over here I followed the distributive property, and we can see in both examples we get the same answer. So that's the distributive property. 
taking the number on the outside of the parentheses and distributing it or multiplying it to each of the numbers on the inside of the parentheses. Here in this example, we're going to use the distributive property to rewrite each expression. So here in this example, it's not written in the distributive property, so I'm going to rewrite it so that it is. So we're going to do two things. We're going to rewrite and we're going to evaluate, just like the last example. So in order to rewrite this using the distributive property, I have to look for the number that's going to go on the outside of the parentheses, because basically we're going to have a number here, parentheses, plus, and I know it's plus because there's a plus sign here, and then another set of parentheses. So I'm going to have a number here and a number here. So I need to figure out what's going to go in each one of those blank spots. The number on the outside of the parentheses is the number that we see more than one time. I see a 7 and a 4 and a 3. The 3 is the number that I see that's going to be multiplied by each of the other numbers, so that's the number that's going to go on the outside of the parentheses. Then I'm just going to take the 7 and the 4 and put those inside the parentheses. 7, 4. These two expressions are equivalent to each other. So now I'm going to go about solving this one, and I'm going to use the order of operations. 7 plus 4 is 11. Bring down to 3. 3 times 11 is 33. I'm going to show you that it's actually the same thing. Three times seven is 21, plus three times four is 12, and 21 plus 12 is 33. So see, we got the same answer both times, one doing the order of operations, the other one using the distributive property. Next, I'm gonna show you several other properties. And one of the key things that I want you to know about properties is basically these are the rules of algebra. These are the, like the rules of the road that tell us when we see a stop sign, we're supposed to stop. When we see a green light, we can go. These are the foundational rules that allow us to do a lot of um, the different things that we can do in algebra. The distributive property is one of them. The next one is known as the commutative property. And in math words, the commutative property says the order in which two numbers are added or multiplied does not change their sum or product. So what it's saying is when you add or multiply two numbers, it doesn't matter what order you can put them in. I could say a plus b is the same thing as saying b plus a. And also, remember it says for adding and for multiplying. So that means I could say the same thing for multiplying. a times b is the same thing as saying b times a. Now let me show you with numbers. 1 plus 2 is the same thing as saying 2 plus 1. Because 1 plus 2 is 3, and th 2 plus 1 is 3. So see how we're getting the same answer here over here. 1 plus 2, we got 3, and 2 plus 1, we got 3. That's what the commutative property says, that it doesn't matter which order you add numbers in, you're always going to get the same answer. Same thing goes for multiplication. If I have 2 times 4, that's the same thing as saying 4 times 2. 2 times 4 is 8 and 4 times 2 is 8. We get the same answer. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, the 2 first and then the 4, or the 4 first and then the 2, you're going to get the same answer. So the community property only applies to addition and multiplication, and it's saying that it doesn't matter what order you put the numbers in, you're going to get the same answer. And I'm sure you knew that before, but now we're putting a, a name to it, and we're calling that the community property. The next property that I'm going to show you is the associative property. And that says the way in which three numbers are grouped when they are added or multiplied does not change their sum or product. So the associative property is saying when we have three numbers, it doesn't matter what way we have them grouped. In other words, where we put the parentheses, it's not going to change the, um, the answer. And again, this is for multiplication and, I mean, addition and multiplication. Again, just like the commutative property. So in other words, you can say a plus b, parentheses, b plus c. That means that you would do the a plus, I mean, the b plus c first, and then you'd add the a, is the same thing as saying, if I put the parentheses around the a and the b, and then add the c. Let me show you that in numbers. So if I say 1 plus parentheses 2 plus 3, 
That's the same thing as saying it's over here. Let me show you. Order of operations says you're going to do this part first. So 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. And that's the same thing as saying that means we do this part first. 3 plus 3 and 3 plus 3 is 6. So it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses, what part of these three numbers you decide to add first, you're always going to get the same answer. And let me show you that same thing with multiplication. So a multiplication would look like this. A times B times C is the same thing as saying It's, it's saying the same thing. It doesn't matter which ones we group together first. Here I have the B and the C grouped together first. Over here I have the A and the B grouped together and you do those first. It doesn't matter which ones you group, you're still going to get the same answer. And I'm going to show you again with, um, with numbers. So over here I'm going to do the 3 times 4 first, which is 12 times 2, which is 24, is equal to over here. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6 times 4, and 6 times 4 is 24. And those two things are equal. So it doesn't matter if you're going to multiply the two, the 3 and the 4 first, or you're going to multiply the 2 and the 3 first, you're still going to get the same answer. And I bet this is also another property that you already knew, that when you multiply and add um, three or more numbers, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. And this is known as the associative property. So the commutative property is when you have two numbers, and the associative property is when you have three numbers. My last property is also something that you already know probably about, and it's known as the identity property. And it's basically saying the sum of an addend in zero is the addend, and the product of a factor in one is the factor. Again, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about, but let me show you. Basically, in letters, if I have a number, any number, I'm going to represent that with the variable a, and I'm going to add to it 0, that means that I'm going to get the variable a. Any number plus 0 is always that number. So let's say I have 5 plus 0 is going to be equal to 5. So basically we're saying that anytime you add 0 to a number, it doesn't change its value. The identity property for multiplication looks like this. If I have the variable b times 1, that means that I'm going to get that same variable again, b, because any number multiplied by 1 is itself. Let me show you with um, numbers. So if I have 3 times 1, that's going to be equal to 3. This is known as the identity property. So anytime I add 0 to a number, I'm going to get that number. Anytime I multiply a number by 1, I'm going to get that number. So those are the, th those are the three other properties besides the distributive property. The commutative property has to do with adding and multiplying two numbers. The associative property has to do with adding or multiplying three numbers. And the identity property has to do with adding 0 to a number or multiplying a number times 1. So here we go. I'm going to try to put all of this that we've just talked about together. Here we have find 4 times 12 times 25 mentally and justify each step. So in other words, I have to figure out what 4 times 12 times 25 is in my head and I need to be able to do it easily. Well, I know that 4 times 25 works out to be 100, and 100 is a really easy number to multiply, so I'm going to change the order of these numbers that I'm going to multiply them in. So I'm going to go 4 times 25 times 12. And when I change the order of the numbers, when I have three or more numbers, that's known as the commutative property. And you don't have to write the whole thing out. You don't have to write out commutative property. You can just abbreviate it CP. So I've changed the order of them. Now I'm going to put the parentheses around these two right here. And I'm going to say I'm going to do this part first. So that's the grouping. So that's the associative property. OK, so I'm going to write AP, associative property. So I'm going to draw a little arrow because this looks a little confusing. This goes here, 
community property goes there, associated property goes there. Okay, now I'm gonna multiply. So four times 25 is 100 times 12. And whenever I multiply a, a number times 100, you just stick that many zeros on the end. So there's two zeros here, and I'm gonna put that on the end of the 12, 1200. There's my answer. This last step from here to here, we don't have to justify, okay? So I've done this mentally by applying the properties that we've talked about. I change the order that I put them in because we're multiplying. I know I can change the order of things. And then I put some parentheses around it. In other words, I changed the grouping in order to make it a little easier for me to multiply. And that's everything that you need to know about these properties. Remember, these properties are kind of like the rules of the road for algebra. These are the rules that say what we can and cannot do. And most of them you probably already knew something about.